Right now, this is a weird one. <laughs> so I've been making a podcast version of the fortnightly email that I send out to um, to my curated list of, of people who are on my email list. And the idea is that um, you can listen to the podcast version instead of reading the email, or you can do both. That's the plan. So each week... I have been taking the email and basically reading it out loud um, and then turning that into a podcast and putting it out. This time, I decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that email and I'm going to feed it into an AI machine and let the AI machine make the podcast. So it's an experiment um, and uh, I'll tell you in a minute about how well I think it's done. Um, I've used a thing called um, Notebook LM, Notebook LM from Google. And basically, Notebook LM is pretty good. You can upload files, um, you can upload um, documents, websites, whatever, and it creates this sort of research paper that tells you all about the document. But it also creates an audio file the structure of which is two people having a conversation about the document. And it kind of, it's like a podcast. I mean, they they make it sound like a podcast. So I've fed it in and I've spat the podcast out the other end and in a minute you're going to hear it. But um, it's very weird. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you whether I like it or not. You tell me if you like it. Contact me in all usual places and tell me if you like it. But I'm going to play the episode that this AI thing has created that's a deep dive on the email. Have a listen, see what you think. And uh, next time, I think we might just come back to it being just me. Um, the very interesting, funny bit is listen to the end where they have a conversation about their own podcast and they talk like they're humans <laughs> and they want to listen to they want to listen to an AI podcast it's a bit weird anyway have a listen see what you think hey everyone and welcome back to the deep dive today we're diving into some seriously interesting stuff about personal and professional growth all from uh you know Steve's latest newsletter over at Sun Development oh, yeah Steve's great he always has such interesting stuff and you know I know what you're thinking. Another self-improvement deep dive. Right. But trust me on this one. We're going way beyond the usual motivational stuff to unearth some truly fascinating insights. We're talking about, you know, feeling good, onboarding, and communication. Yeah, he does have a real knack for finding content that really challenges you to think differently and become more self-aware, you know? Absolutely. So let's kick things off with this idea of feeling good. I mean, we all know those external factors that can really impact our mood, right? Like, tell me about it the weather, the news, that never-ending to-do list. But get this, Steve's newsletter highlights a really interesting concept. We can choose our mood. He even quotes the musician Scroobius Pip, who says, how hard is it to decide to be in a good mood? And then just be in a good mood. <laughs> it sounds so simple, but is it really that easy? I mean, it's a really simple concept on the surface, but of course, it's not always just about flipping a switch. Yeah. But there's a powerful truth in there. We have way more control over our emotions than we think. Right. It's not about just ignoring or, you know, yeah. suppressing our emotions. It's about understanding how we can influence them. And you know what? Steve's newsletter actually pointed us to the work of this guy, Paul McKenna, who uses techniques like NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, to help people change their feelings directly. NLP. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? It's pretty fascinating. It explores how our thoughts, language, and behavior are all connected and how we can actually reprogram those patterns to get the results we want. So, like, in the context of mood, it suggests that just by changing our thought patterns and our internal dialogue, we can directly impact our emotional state. So instead of being totally controlled by our emotions, we can learn to manage them, almost like rewiring our brains. So what are some of the specific strategies McKenna uses in his work? Well, one technique he talks a lot about is anchoring. It's all about associating a certain feeling, like joy or confidence, with a specific touch or gesture. 
And by repeatedly triggering that anchor, people can actually call up that feeling whenever they want. And he also uses visualization techniques where people imagine themselves experiencing those positive emotions in really vivid detail. Basically, they're training their minds to access those feelings easier. Wow, that's like having a secret weapon against bad moods. Imagine being able to just tap into a feeling of calm or happiness right when you need it. It does sound pretty remarkable. And while it's not some magic solution, there's more and more evidence that shows these techniques actually work. The key is to practice regularly and to be willing to challenge those, you know, those habitual thought patterns we all have. That makes sense. It's like building a mental muscle. The more we practice choosing our mood, the better we get at it. And, you know, Steve points out that even just choosing to be in a slightly more positive mood can have a ripple effect on our entire day. Oh, absolutely. It changes how we interact with people our productivity, even how resilient we are when things get tough. When we feel good, we approach everything with more optimism and creativity, which can lead to, well, just better outcomes. I love that. It's like a chain reaction of positivity, and it all starts with that initial choice to cultivate a good mood. And, you know, speaking of setting ourselves up for success, Steve also talks about onboarding in this newsletter. Onboarding. Yeah. Usually we think about that in terms of new employees, but Steve argues that the concept can be applied much more broadly. Exactly. He even shares this crazy statistic from a Brandon Hall study. A strong onboarding process can boost new hire productivity by a whopping 70%. So how can we use this power of onboarding in other parts of our lives? Well, think about it this way. Onboarding is really all about having structure and support when you're going through a transition. Right. It's about setting up, you know, clear expectations, mm -hmm. offering guidance and resources, and creating a sense of belonging. Yeah. And these ideas are really valuable no matter what you're doing, whether you're starting a new job, joining a new, you know, fitness class, or even beginning a new relationship. Wow. I never thought about onboarding in those ways before, but it totally makes sense. It's like creating a roadmap to help you succeed no matter what the new experience is. I mean, who doesn't want to feel more confident and supported and prepared when they're starting something new? Exactly. And the best part is that we can actually design our own personalized onboarding process. Like, let's say you're taking up a new hobby, like photography. You could make an onboarding plan that includes things like researching different types of cameras, joining a photography group, or setting, you know, specific goals for yourself. That's a great idea. It takes away all that feeling of being overwhelmed or not knowing where to begin. It's like you're giving yourself a crash course in success. Hmm. And you know what? Steve's newsletter recommended this article from e-learning industry that has some really good tips for creating effective onboarding experiences. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. The article highlights several useful frameworks, like the four C's model, which focuses on connection, culture, clarification, and capability. Okay, so break that down for me. What do those C's actually mean in practice? Okay, so connection is all about fostering a sense of belonging and community. Culture. That's about immersing yourself in the values and norms of the new environment. Clarification. Well, that involves setting clear expectations and goals. And finally, capability is about developing the skills and knowledge you need to succeed. So it's about creating a well-rounded onboarding experience that addresses both the practical and the emotional sides of transitioning into something new. I can see how this would be really valuable for anyone, whether it's in a professional setting or just a personal one. For sure. And I think it ties back to that whole idea of choosing your mood. By being intentional and prepared when approaching new experiences, we're more likely to feel confident and optimistic. You know, that's a really great point. It's like we've got this toolkit of strategies, choosing our mood, creating an onboarding plan to help us navigate all of life's changes more smoothly and feel better along the way. Exactly. And speaking of navigating transitions, maybe we should move on to talking about communication mm. because how we communicate plays such a big role in how we experience and interact with the world around us. You're so right. You know, this is a topic that always gets me thinking. We're communicating every single day, but are we actually doing it effectively? Are we really connecting with others and getting our message across? You know, George Bernard Shaw, he famously said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And that always makes me stop and think about my own communication style. It is a powerful quote. It's a good reminder that just because we've said something doesn't mean the other person actually understood us. And that's something Steve's newsletter really stresses the importance of talking about how we communicate. I know it might sound kind of meta, but it's so important. 
if we don't take the time to think about our communication patterns and, you know, understand how others perceive what we're saying and doing, we're just setting ourselves up for misunderstandings and maybe even strained relationships. Absolutely. It's all about becoming more self-aware of our communication styles. Like, are we direct communicators or are we more indirect? Are we good listeners? Do we express ourselves in a clear and assertive way? These are all really good things to think about. You know, Steve actually shared a personal story in his newsletter about how he's been working on his own communication skills. Like he's been paying more attention to his body language and making a real effort to actively listen to people without interrupting and being more mindful of his tone of voice. It's always great to see someone actually putting these ideas into action. In fact, the newsletter even recommended this talk by Charles Duhigg. You know, he wrote The Power of Habit on Becoming a Super Communicator. Definitely worth listening to if you want to dig deeper into this. Oh, yeah. I love Duhigg's work. He's an amazing researcher and storyteller. I'll have to check that out. But before we go too far down the communication rabbit hole, maybe we should come back to Steve's AI experiment, the one where he used an AI to create a podcast about his own newsletter. Ah, yes, the AI podcast episode. It's pretty amazing how technology is starting to blur the lines between human creativity and AI. It really is like we're living in a sci-fi movie. I'm really curious to hear how it turned out. Was the AI able to capture what Steve was trying to say? Did it sound robotic or did it sound more human? Well, I guess we'll have to listen to it and see for ourselves. It's definitely an interesting experiment. And it raises some questions about the future of content creation. For sure. And speaking of the future, one thing that really stood out to me in Steve's newsletter was this whole theme of empowerment. Whether it's choosing our mood, creating our own onboarding plans, or becoming more aware of how we communicate, it's all about taking control of our own lives. That's such a good point. It's about moving from being passive to being active, taking ownership of our own experiences. And it goes back to what we talked about before, about choosing our mood. When we believe we can actually influence our emotions and our circumstances, we're going to be more resilient and optimistic when we face challenges. That's what I love about it. It's like we're reclaiming our power and taking control of our own lives. And that's such a powerful message to leave our listeners with. It really is. It reminds us that we may not always be able to control what happens to us, Mm -hmm. but we can always choose how we react to it. We can choose our attitude, how we approach things, and ultimately how we experience life. And that's where true empowerment comes from. Perfectly said. And as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to challenge everyone listening to think about one small change they can make based on what we've talked about today. Maybe try out one of Paul McKenna's mood boosting techniques. Create an onboarding plan for a new goal you have. Or even just pay closer attention to how you communicate in your next conversation. Whatever it is, remember that even the smallest changes can make a difference. They can help you become more self-aware, improve your relationships, and live a more fulfilling life. It's all about those small steps towards growth and understanding that personal development is a journey, not a destination. And if any of you are feeling adventurous, I definitely recommend checking out Steve's AI-generated podcast episode. You can find it on the Sharp podcast feed. It'll be so interesting to compare our human discussion with, you know, what the AI came up with using the same material. Yeah, it's a pretty cool chance to see how AI is being used to create content in new ways. Exactly. And who knows? Maybe we'll even pick up some new ideas from our AI counterpart. Maybe it'll offer a fresh perspective or highlight something we might have missed. I'm always open to new perspectives. So listeners, definitely give that AI episode a listen and let us know what you think. Did you like it? Did it give you any new ideas? We'd love to hear your thoughts. And maybe it even got you thinking about AI and how you could use it in your own life. That's a great point. This whole deep dive has really been about empowering ourselves with new knowledge and tools, whether it's understanding how our emotions work, creating our own onboarding plans, or even figuring out how to use AI. It all comes down to using those tools to make our lives more fulfilling and meaningful. Couldn't have said it better myself. So until next time, keep diving deep, keep exploring, and keep asking those amazing questions. And remember, personal and professional growth, well, it never really ends. Embrace the challenges, stay curious, and never stop learning. We'll see you on the next Deep Dive. What did you think? Should I give up the microphone to them? Let me know.